For example, you see the cannons there. That is not our heritage. That is the white people's heritage when they stole our land. We're the first people here before any other people came here, the Khoi people. They drove, they drove our people to extinction. From what my, my uncle told me, it was like when they came here, the Boers, they were shooting us like they were, they were, they were, they were, they were hunting animals. You know what they did with, it, with our, our mothers? They pressed. The press they cut off and it was used for the cigarette boxes, like a pouch for the cigarettes. The Hangberg community, and when I think about when I said the Hangberg community, I, I, I mean the, the fishers who have a, a deep rooted history in Hout Bay on the Cape Peninsula, fishing the, the western side of the Cape Peninsula. They've been marginalized and, and ousted out of any sort of legal framework over, over and over again. The small-scale fishers from Hangberg in particular never got a, an opportunity to raise their voices, to raise their needs, to raise their stories. With no consultation, with no participation, with no benefit sharing mechanism, that is a recipe for, for disaster, that is a recipe of, for non-legitimacy, that is a recipe for, for so-called poaching. But then we saw some white people, they came to our source and they asked us what we are doing. And we started wondering, hey, why would you give us five or four, four bags of crayfish? Just for that one bag, and so we wanted to look into that bag, and we saw, no, this is a lot of this envelope. So then there must be a market. Above 90% in the um, 90%? Above, above. It's bad, yeah. For a fact that various organized groups, Ablon poaching groups in Hard Bay, in Hangberg, um, subsidize the local soccer club, have set up schools, they're providing, they're filling that void that government is not, is not filling. So they're providing for a lot of the services, a lot of the needs in a community, not just money, but um, that, uh, that, yeah, that, that the community identifies. You can see the way they are living, there's no plasma TV, there's no big bench park there, the perception they put in the newspaper. You see what I mean? It is what they carry out to the world, saying to the world, now how these poachers are getting rich. You see what I mean? They are faulty, rich and whatever. There's no thing like that. Sometimes when the weather is rough, we go to sea to take a chance. You see what I mean? Because there's nothing at home. You see, we are not crazy people. I can see most money, hey, the way they are up, but I'm gonna take it same. But yet, our people go out to fish and they die. They literally don't die to put food on the table.
that was one of the two guys that got lost. That's the guy he talked about they found when they come and search for that white guy. From a socio-economic impact or a cultural impact or a broader social impact, there are many. I think the um, sort of the illegal fishery and the perceptions that it's all fine and one can do this um, fuels other illegal activities. Um, from a youth development point of view, I think many youngsters see this as an avenue, as an avenue uh, to become someone in your community, to develop some type of identity and respect in your community to make money. From a youth development point of view, it's a complete disaster. And then more broadly, from a, a broad, broader social fabric, from a illegal crime, illegal crime changes power relationships, changes dynamics, often, often indirectly affects um, affect the, how women are treated, how children are treated, how the family uh, structure is knit together. And so, yeah, it destroys basically the social fabric. What made me say the other day? It actually brought tears to my eyes. I went to go fetch my son at school. Teacher, she called me, she, she heard that I'm involved in, in the community and, and I've been involved in poaching. Um, and then she said, it was quite saddening to hear this morning, she asked the class, what, what would you like to be? And they said, they wanted to be a poacher. It is not a dream. Some of the guys is doing something. Then the poachers will see, or some of them will see, hey, we can also go there the route me. And it's a legal route. There's no one in this world that don't want to do something legal. Yes, please just give it to Mr. Mania. Thank you very much. That is the All we need is just to work with government and they must support us in this whole initiative. Realization. Real is gonna hit the people. And they they're gonna see no man. That people we voted into power, they don't really give a damn about us. You see what I mean? But I'm telling you, we're not going to wait anymore. We know how to do it now. We just close the harbor and we go take a piece of land because we are the Koi people. We need this. There are many individuals in Hangburg who have these ideas, who have really thought about this package of the last um, so many years who are despite all these hurdles, despite of these challenges, still have really interesting and worthwhile visions. There are many stumbling blocks, but they're also not really stumbling blocks. It's really about different stakeholders taking the courage to, uh, to get together and to connect, to put it all on the table, to discuss differences and to start developing. If you watch the movies today, that's all we to see. Three girls, gold rings, whatever, flashy cars, hard music, party. It's saddening. It really is. But I know I'm going to change the views of things then. At the end of the day, they're going to be quite good aquaculture farmers. And the diving skills will get put into good use. I know that it's not a dream. <laughs>